guys, this is going to be interesting because what's happening is fishery guys, managers are going to go down and they're going to net the middle of the lake because what happens in sunlight where it's so clear here, they get like an algal bloom that pops up off the bottom, it goes on the surface and then the fly line, the fly anglers go mad because you can't get your fly line through. Wait for this, they've just given us the tip. I said, well, we probably won't catch anything then if you've got this huge net going through water. They said, no, the fishing can actually be better not just because they've cleared the weed out of the way and us fly anglers can get these fly lines to them but it stirs all the shrimps, all the insects, anything that's in those weeds all stirred up, it's like a big fishy soup if you like they say, trout go nuts! let's go down and watch what they do and just see how they go about this netting now here at TA Fishing we always like to try and give you tips on where to fish as well, not just come to Arrington everybody knows Arrington's one of the top places but I'm just going to tell you, here, years ago, I've been coming here for, well, I can't even remember, set old, 30, 40 years. Over here in the corner of the first lake, there's an outflow that comes through from the stock ponds. That used to be quite deep in there, and years ago, it was the ultimate hotspot. I do mean the ultimate hotspot for getting big fish. How big? Dick Walker fished over there, I believe, the late Dick Walker, who was the iconic angler of my generation, freshwater and fly fishing. And I think he had the first British record that was over 18 pounds. And I think, if I recall correctly, he didn't claim it. Didn't even bother to claim it. That's as I remember it anyway. I tell you what, we all know that was the spot, I think, over there. Just in there. Now, that's changed now. It's silted up. So if you see, see like this, a shallow area, you can spot there. There's, there's not worth fishing. There's no fish in it. The reason being, the trout could come into water. Look, this deep, couldn't they? But they have that natural nervousness of being in shallow water because historically over the years in the prehistoric times they were attacked by whatever fish eagles who knows pterodactyls i don't know it's in their genes to be wary in shallow water so we're going to look down here but we're not even fishing there because i know there's no fish in there the best fishing is going to start where that water drops off gets to about four or five feet they're going to feel comfortable in there they're going to feel confident and i feel that's our chance of a hookup Well, you can see here, this is one of the uh, streams that runs around this whole area. Uh, an itching, they call it the River Itching, and this will be, I guess, an itching carrier. And the water from this is used way back up in the stock ponds to, uh, to you know, stock all the fish, feed them, and it obviously fills up these lakes as well. But just to show you on the centre lake here, the same sort of principle applies. This was what we used to call historically the inlet. And I can remember 30, 40 years ago, running, running at nine o'clock the open time with about 30 anglers tramping behind you, trying to get to the inlet, because very often that's where the biggest fish would be doing. A lot of big double figure fish have come from there. But now, again, it's sort of silted up in this corner, which pushes the fish out further into the lake. And I'm just gonna go across and show you where this scum comes up, which is what the guys down there are gonna be netting out. So because the water's so clear, the sunlight can penetrate and that creates an activity on the bottom and brings the weed and at certain temperatures, this pops up on the surface and you can see it down there. It's a sort of a black scummy algae and it's really annoying when you're fly fishing, but we're going to see that dragged out. But here is the most famous tree. This old antique tree here has probably seen more antique fishermen catching antique fish than ever. There's been more big trout caught here than I should think anywhere in history in Britain. It's a monumental tree part of, I guess, the Avington estate here, a superb estate. But let's get up and see what's coming out after they do that netting. There you go, people. You can see it is just disgusting. It happens on a lot of clear water fisheries, not exclusive here. Anywhere there's clear water, the algae pops up and that's what's got to be skimmed off. Thank you. 
small trout fisherman must have one of these. A full trout fly box with as many different flies as you can get in there. The majority of which probably won't catch you anything, probably will cost you good money and probably end up getting stuck in the trees. But listen, hey ho, all you trout fishermen out there, hey, I'm preaching the converted, you know that. For those who don't know, there's sort of three different types of flies and this is what they are. The first stage I would say is an insect hatching out underneath the water, wriggling its way to the surface to turn into a fly. It flies away, it lives however long it lives, it comes back to the water, lays its eggs and the whole cycle starts again. For that, you need something like these. These are called nymphs. That's a nymph in the, in the stage before it's turned out into a fly on the surface and these will be sort of subsurface, quite small hooks. You'll notice they're small hooks and they're very, very small. Just pop one out there, you can see it like that. There's the hook. Now that, believe it or not, imitates a shrimp. That's what it's supposed to imitate. And it goes that way up like that, it just goes like that. So there's plenty of shrimp, so we might end up using something like a shrimp during the day trying to catch these trout. You can on some waters use what's called a lure. They are like deranged cocaine addict budgerigars. Yes, they are big and you can see here very, very fibrous. But this fiber, if I just wet it, this is called marabou. Look, as soon as it wets, it, it goes down to nothing. But this wiggles and waves like a fish's tail in the water. So basically a lure will be something that imitates I'm going to say another fish, just to give you an idea. Some of these are used for a different species, but on average those would be something like you would be using. Some have weights in the head there. Now you can see this marabou is very fine fibres, but if I just wet it, do not put the hook in your mouth, I just wet it with a bit of spit. Immediately it goes down and underwater that looks like a fish's tail. So that's another type. The third type is when the insect gets to the surface from the nymph stage and hatches into a fly. Now, here's one. This is a, oh, God knows how old this is, probably 40, 50, 60, even a lot older than that. But you can see, I've used that one there to show you, it does in fact have wings to it. You see somebody has tied that delicately, a perfect match of a species of mayfly. So those nymphs I told you about earlier hatch into a fly. And for those, you don't crush them all in one big box, you keep them in a, a special box like this so they're all dry uh, and they float on the surface just like this on top of the surface film and then you actually visually see the trout come up and take that off the surface that is deemed the pinnacle of fly fishing of trout fishing in England is to be able to catch a trout on a dry fly today we're going to hopefully catch a trout on a nymph these are mayfly nymphs some of you might say what are the names they all have different wings this one for instance here is what's called a spent fly because the wings as you imagine if a fly dies and lays its eggs its wings are dead they lay flat so those are supposed to be wings that lay on the surface and would look to the trout from beneath if they're looking up to the surface like a dead easy sucker meal of a dead fly so we are now ready to go and try and catch a trout after which is going to be meeting Mr. Priest. Once you've made your cast out, you've got to impart some movement to the fly line. So you hold the rod in one hand, you pull the fly line across your fingers. Now you can make some action to try and make that fly animated with some fast tweaks. Well, it certainly tipped the paid off. All that scum is starting to come back again. And we went from small uh, shrimps and now I've got a fish hooked up that's absolutely took half of the fly line off the reel. I'm getting it back now. And they've done this lake 
gradually clearing that uh, scum off. Gotta be honest guys, I think it comes up as fast as those poor guys are stripping it out. But I've got a trout hooked up from their tip off. Well, they've netted that scum out of the way. Come on. I'm using one of Sid Knight's pearly daddy long legs. Got a tungsten gold head on the end of it. Oh, good fish. I'd say he's going to go over four pounds, the other side of four pounds, this one. Yes, cruising. Oh, he was cruising on the surface, he's just stripping it out again. Another fish following it along. So they're obviously attracted to all the little shrimps and whatever crustaceans, Ooh, insects, that have been stirred up by that surface netting and the net. It's going to go. Oh, I thought it was waste. Oh, I was waiting for that that time. Got a violent, violent head shake, which tells me the fly might come out any moment. The net they use is actually very, very shallow. Maybe a foot deep, they're just skimming, skimming off the surface. So that stirring up has definitely done it. For me anyway. Come on fish. Whoa, haul him. See if we'll take some hauling. Now, here on the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, we do specialise in leaving the net as far away as possible. Give a personal request to the camera and if you can run up there and get it. Yeah, <laughs> both nets are up here. There's another trout. There we go. Cool. So I've, we've got splits up as you normally do. We're going to work together, filming together because I've got the head cam. I didn't have time to put the head cam on. Mike got a rainbow further up on the other side of where the net was pulled in. He's as bad as I am. I've got the, uh, was carrying the big camera but put it down to make the car. And thankfully he's run up and at least we get you a bit of action and shows you hopefully you might get two fish out of this. I think he's done, I think he's done, I think he's done. The fly is hanging there. That's too late. Oh, oh look at that one. Oh my god. That is the other side of four pounds, absolutely. No question. Let's get him up, give him a good night, Vienna. The big sleep and we'll show him to you. So there is the fly, they did the damage that time. The pearly daddy, you can see there, it's got those long, long legs. And I think when you tweak that slowly, they sort of pulsate and they've got the tungsten gold bead head there, just takes it down a bit. To be honest, I like that, what I call a target. I don't know whether you guys are gonna see that on the back. If I put my hand there, that little bit of green on the back there it's what um, we as fly fishermen call a target, it's a target colour. Um, if you go freshwater fishing for perch and you have a spinner, put a red tag of wool on the end, it's a target, it does work, it's been done for years ago. So there we go, that's a fly. And this is Mr Rainbow Trout, who's obviously racing around after they stirred all that up there, chomping away. I actually see his mouth go on the fly, see him chomp on it. Yeah, two or three snaps at it. And, I missed it, and now I'd say that fish is about, yeah, it's a five pounder, okay, I'd say yeah. that one. Yeah, it's close to, certainly four, 12, five pounds. Good stamp of fish here at Arrington. And beautiful surroundings. This misty hay.